Hey guys, my name is Cleo and I'm here today with my Mini Cooper S. It's an R53 1.6 Supercharge. This is actually my track toy and what it is, I had it sent away for a couple of weeks over the winter just to get a few bits done. It had an oil filter housing leaking, so I had that just totally replaced. I had new sump gasket fitted, new rocker cover fitted, new rocker cover uh, bolts fitted. What else did I have done? Engine, uh, engine oil change, I've had transmission change, I've had the front wheel bearings change so it's had quite a quite a bit of quite a bit of an overhaul really over this winter um, I got the car back and then turns out it's also got another rattling noise which I think I know what it is and I think it's going to be the idler pulley now I'll bring you round and the idler pulley the idler pulley is actually down here in the serpentine belt area and it's just the idler pulley down at the bottom next to the crankshaft so that is my job for today to go and replace that it's a really distinctive kind of like tinny noise like a really high pitched tinny noise some people say it sounds like it's whistling um, but to get access to that i'm going to be able to take off obviously take the wheel off i've got to take the wheel arch liner off take the belt off i've got a belt tension at all as well to do that and then we're going to just get that all pulled apart, take the old, hopefully, idler pulley off that's failed, put a new one on, put a new belt back on, and then we should be good to go. So it's quite a simple fix. It's not too difficult. It's really simple for you guys are, you know, looking to do it yourself. If you've got the same problem. Even if you haven't got the same problem and you're just a bit worried, it's worth doing it anyway because, again, it's something you can do in your driveway at home, provided you've got the belt pulley tool, which makes it a bit easier. But, yeah, so we're going to crack on. We're going to get this jacked up, wheel off, arch out, and let's see what the issue is. I mean, it saves my bacon a lot of times, purely because I can't fit that. I can't even fit a low-profile jack on either mounting point. So I have to use what I like to call the death jack. This is actually a scissor jack though, but I have to be very careful because they like to slip. Not that I've had that yet, today could be the day. But yeah, so I'm going to just get one hand up. Okay, so I've got the wheel off. Turns out my jack doesn't go high enough to fit an extra stand under the subframe, which is really annoying. So I've sort of just had to lever it just enough. I only need to get the wheel off, so it hasn't got to go high anyway. But yeah, I've only levered it up just enough that I can get to it. And then, yeah, I can sort of go from there on it and put that there. Just so if it does drop, at least I've got something to be able to get it back up again. It won't drop on on the actual brake itself, hopefully not. Right, so, wheel arch liner. So I'm gonna have to ping off, uh, what have we got? I mean, you can actually take these off in halves and then bend it back, which is probably what I'm gonna do. So I can take off that one, that one's already missing, that one, that one's already gone, this one. Uh, if you wanna take the rest off, there's a metal screw up here, that one there. That one there. Uh, I don't know if I've got. I don't think I've got one under here anymore. No. Okay. So it should be pretty simple to get that off, and then I can get access to the idler pulley through here. So I'm just going to quickly pop that off. Okay. So I've got my wheel arch liner off. So again, all you have to do really is literally just take the front half off and just fold it back. You don't need to take the whole thing off. There's no point. You've only got to get enough access, literally, just to get to the idler pulley, which is in here. And it's that one. So it's a, I believe it's a 13 mil bolt. Um, all you gotta do first though, I've got my belt tensioner tool. Looks like it's seen better days. It is handmade. I got it off a friend who was kind enough to let me have it after he went turbo with his mini. So literally, just gonna put it in. It rests on that bolt there. Then if you can see slightly, that is gonna tension all the way up. It doesn't give you a lot of room to be honest. It's quite easy to slip off. I get my hand up here. So when you pull the 
pull the belt pulley tool this spring's going to collapse and you've got two holes you see my finger is there you've got two holes that's the first one a second hole is going to pop up and you need to get like an allen key and just put it in the hole and that'll release the tension on the belt so i'm going to do that i'm not actually going to video it because i need two hands for this okay so as you can see so i've now put a screwdriver into the pin so that's just releasing the tension off of the belt so now i can remove the belt, it's got all the slack there. This is the idler pulley I'm taking off. I've got a 30 mil socket and extension off of it. I'm just gonna try and sort of crank that. Just break that nut off. So I'm gonna put the camera down for a second actually, just so I can do that. You can face it there somewhere, I don't think you can see that. Now it's just gonna come loose. There you go, yeah, so that's just, that's coming loose there. That's dead easy. Might be able to get off by hand now. Unscrew like so. Just gonna screw that off. Is that loose? Yeah, nice one. Right, that's off now. So that's come off. And yeah, that was my problem. Look at that. It's totally disjointed from the bearing. So that's that's a hundred percent what my rattling issue was. Yeah, it's the bolts that you just disjointed, and it's moving around at the back behind the bearing. So. I mean, it's not done bad. 80,000 miles in 17 years. I can't complain. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to compare it, just so you guys can see the difference. This is the idler pulley. Again, you can call it the stationer pulley, the idler pulley. It's got a few names for it. Adjusting pulley. And again, you can see that's just all the play in there. So that's just totally come apart. And that's why it's whistling and it was rattling constantly just a constant really tinny rattle behind there and this is the new one so again see how that's I mean that's fixed on no play in that at all that's on there and again if I give it a spin that's all job done yeah and then again if I spin the old one it moves but again there's just there's a lot of play in it and it's not sat correctly right so now what we've got to do is literally just screw that one back in uh, torque it up there is a correct torque specification I think it was ooh, 20 foot pounds I think I'll double check it but to be honest I'm just gonna tighten it up and then I'll double check the torques for you if I can put them in so let's get this put back in put this all back in here just gonna make sure the belt's not in the way Please, can you move out of the way, belt? Which is in the way. You are still in the way. There we go. Right, let's see if we can screw that back in now by hand. Without trying to cross thread it. And it's all gone. It's not going to get caught underneath it. Yeah, pull it out slightly. Let's tighten up a little bit more. All right. I'm slip that belt back under there. Make sure it's all. Just make sure the belt's all around all the pulleys correctly before I take the tensioner off. And then. Should be good to go. Excuse all my tools everywhere. All right, so that's all fitted back on. I'm just gonna start the car up. Yeah, nice one. So, looks as though, yeah, that's it. No more squealing, so job is done. Woo if you haven't already, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. And we'll catch you guys next time. Hopefully next time we'll be out on track and we should be all good to go. See you soon.